takes about half a minute to download a file of size 1 GB. A click is all it takes to shop. Instantly connecting with people from across the world has never been this easy. For all of this, we have the internet to thank. Some would argue that the net has disconnected us in other ways. Love it or hate it, the internet is here to stay. In this episode of Explained, we take you through a virtual journey, starting from the Cold War, which gave birth to the internet, to the future of satellite internet. The internet connects the world by linking different devices, be it computers, laptops or smartphones. Imagine this, you have clicked a picture of a cute dog. You then share that photo with another canine loving friend from a different city. She receives a message in an instant. But how does this happen? We tell you. Once you hit send, the picture gets converted into a series of zeros and ones, a language that computers understand. Your Wi-Fi or phone broadband will then carry this digital information to its final destination. This might sound simple, but I assure you, it isn't. Before we delve deeper, let's trace the origins of the internet and understand how it evolved to its current form. The Cold War spurred an intense competition between the US and the Soviet Union. In 1957, the Soviet Union became the first country to launch a satellite named Sputnik into space. With this, the Soviet Union took the lead. The US couldn't afford to fall behind. Besides, they feared nuclear attacks from the Soviet Union. Military and government organizations had to find a way to stay connected through computers. Working on this initiative was the US Defense Department's Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA. The project drew inspiration from Joseph Carl R. Licklider, an American scientist heading the ARPA. He envisioned a future where computers were linked to each other. The ARPA roped in Larry Roberts, who was previously with the MIT, to bring this vision into reality. To accomplish this, Roberts and his colleagues came up with something called as packets. This means computers could communicate with each other by tearing information into fragments called packets. These fragments then reassembled before reaching its destination. With this, in 1969, the predecessor of the internet called ARPANET went live. It connected two systems, a computer at the Stanford Research Institute and another at the University of California at Los Angeles, which were 350 miles apart. The first transmitted message was LO. It was supposed to be logging. But the system crashed before sending the entire message. In their next attempt, however, the team tasted success. In the 1970s, two scientists, Robert Kahn and Winton Cerf, came up with Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol, or TCP slash IP, a set of rules which ensures that computers understand each other. In the following years, ARPANET grew larger, but that didn't last long. It was shut down in 1990. Sometime in the late 1980s or the early 1990s, the internet made its public debut, expanding beyond military organizations and universities. Making the internet accessible to all was the world's first browser called World Wide Web or WWW thanks to a computer scientist named Tim Berners-Lee. In 1994, pizza became the first item to be sold online, setting the stage for e-commerce platforms. Since then, there's been no turning back for the internet. Today, the interconnected world owes a lot to cables buried in the oceans. And the internet from space is going to be the next big thing. Intrigued? Find out more in our next episode. Thank you for watching our video. Do let us know of topics you'd like us to cover.